on the 6th of August 2019 from WBRN Radio and the Boston Red Network. The title of our episode is Al Franken, The Case of Al Franken, or Al Franken, A Case of Injustice. Uh, We're working on a title, but uh, we probably will go with Al Franken, A Case of Injustice. The resignation of the former uh, senator from uh, Minnesota, Al Franken. This is based upon Jane uh, Meir. She is a staff writer at the New Yorker since 1995. I'll start with the last paragraph of her article here. And this is uh, the lawyer Debbie Katz, who had uh, represented uh, Christine Blasey Ford and other sexual harassment victims, remained troubled by. Franken's case, she contends the allegations leveled against Senator Franken did not warrant his forced forced, uh, expulsion from the Senate, particularly given the context in which most of the behavior occurred, which in his capacity as a comedian, she added, all offensive behavior should be addressed, not all offensive behavior warrants the most severe sanction. Cat sees Franken as a uh, cautionary tale for the Me Too movement. And to treat all allegations the same is is not only inappropriate, she warned, it uh, feeds into a, a backlash narrative that men are vulnerable to every frivolous allegation by women. She is correct there. It can be overdone. Other feminists uh, see the episode as a necessary corrective uh, Teaser who uh, thinks that the behavior described in the media qualifies as sexual be- uh, harassment uh, told me uh, one of the uh, troubling things about this is there really aren't easy answers. When you change the rules, you end up penalizing people who are, who uh, caught behaving according to the old rules. But if you don't change the rules, then they will never uh, change. Now. Some activists in the women's movement, uh, Franken's uh, resignation was a welcome milestone. Linda Hirschman, the author of the recent book, Reckoning the Epic Battle Against Sexual Abuse and Harassment, told me Franklin clearly intended to touch these women. In doing so, he violated their uh, right to bodily integrity. She argued the Democratic Party had uh, belatedly made up for the excused uh, Bill Clinton treatment of women, adding that it finally started to be the party that protected women from having their bottoms grabbed. Franken feels uh, deeply sorry that he made women uncomfortable and is trying uh, to understand and learn from what he is. He did wrong, he told me, and that uh, differentiating different kinds of behavior is important. He also argued the idea that anybody who accused someone of something is always right is not the case, and this is not reality. There's no doubt about that. And uh, in this is paragraph four from the bottom. The next day, Franken gave a short uh, resignation speech. Gillibrand, who is running for uh, president now, and other colleagues flocked to hug him. I'm sure why they did that after vilifying him, but uh, Franken told me. I'm angry at my colleagues who uh, did this. I think uh, they were just trying to get past one a bad a news cycle for months. He, he ignored her calls and canceled dates with friends. I got pretty drunk, he said. I've been uh, clinically depressed. I became, excuse me, clinically depressed. I wasn't 100% cognitively. I needed medication. It's a very sad situation. This happened to him. Drew uh, Littman, uh, Franken's first chief of staff, told me people said he didn't have to do it, but uh, he's so social. His nerves were exposed all the time. It was like going to school and thinking that these people are your friends. They uh, really like you, and then one day they all get together and beat you up. You don't want to go back to school after that, does Norm Ornstein. He was a uh, player in the... Uh, Reagan administration, political scientist, uh, works at the Heritage, I believe now. Franken's friend said it's uh, 
it was uh, no more a choice than jumping after they made you walk the plank. So that is his uh, situation. Let's just go up to the top of the article here. We've had this on the desk. This is on the 22nd. It actually was the 29th of July. This is the case of Al Franken. This is Jane uh, Mayer here. When uh, Franken was asked if he regretted his decision to resign, he said, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, last month, a little background, I climbed a set of stairs in Row House to find Al Franken, and she editorializes here and said the Minnesota uh, disgraced a former senator wanting around in jeans and soccer. Well, so what? It was a sunny day. The shades were mostly drawn. Takeout containers of humus and carrot sticks were on the kitchen table. His wife, uh, Franny uh, Bison, was uh, stuck in their apartment in a D.C. with a cold. Anyway, Franken has uh, been since uh, he resigned, uh, and that was December of 2017, accusations of uh, sexual improprieties. There have been occasional sightings of him in Washington. People mention having a glimpse of him riding the metro, browsing alone in a bookstore. There was gossip that he had fallen into deep depression, had been seen in a fetal position on a friend's couch. He had been perhaps the most recognizable figure in the Senate, partly because he entered as a celebrity and best-selling author, a former writer and performer on Saturday Night Live. Frank is now just one more face in the gallery of previously powerful men who brought down by the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement itself, a very interesting movement there, a movement whose time has come, uh, uh, there was no doubt about that, but whose uh, fate had been uh, commercialized by the media and exploited by the media there. Of course, you had numerous people that appeared, the poster uh, person, a poster boy, when you recall, was Bill Cosby. A case that had happened uh, virtually 20 years before, a case that he had settled uh, with a woman that uh, was an official at uh, Temple University, where uh, Bill received his uh, doctorate. And nonetheless, he settled a civil suit with her, the uh, deposition uh, was ordered on seal, and the rest is history. And then they went to a long uh, uh, thing of uh, encounters uh, with women uh, back to the 70s. Well, these helped to build a movement, uh, but the big question is here, and I've listened to interviews uh, with the woman that actually founded the, new, the uh, Me Too movement, and... Uh, echoed her encounters with various people. I think the most uh, prominent encounter was of the current president, D.J. Trump, and it went nowhere. Only two years ago, Franklin was being taken up as, I mean, talked up, excuse me, as a possible challenger to, and this is very important here, D.J. Trump in 2020. In the Senate hearings, he proved himself to be one of the most effective critics of the uh, Trump administration, his tough question of board guard sessions, Trump's nominee for attorney general session, uh, led session to recuse himself from investigation into Russian influence in the 2016 election and uh, the appointment of Robert Mueller uh, as special prosecutor. As it turned out, Franklin's only role in the 2020 election campaign has uh, been as a figure of controversy. On June the 4th, uh, Pete Buttigieg was rightly criticized on social media for saying that he would have not pressured uh, Franken to resign as virtually all his rival Democrats who were then in the Senate. And here they called out Christian Gillibrand, who has been plagued by courts of her role in the first, uh, as the first of three dozen uh, Democratic senators demand his resignation. That was a bandwagon effect. Many of the Democrats were scared that would pull down uh, their efforts. Gillibrand, who cast herself as a feminist champion of zero tolerance towards sexual uh, improprieties, but Democratic donors sympathetic to uh, Franken have uh, 
stunned, her uh, fundraising, Gilbrand says, and tries to intimidate her into silences. Well, this whole case is around a uh, former laundry uh, model, uh, conservative talk, ho- talk show host uh, named uh, uh, Leanne uh, Tweeden. And she accused him of forcibly kissing her. This is back in 2006 in a wall face USO uh, tour. Several women followed accusations against uh, Al Franken. All of them are said on inappropriate touching or kissing. Half of the accusers named uh, have, uh, have still not became a public. That in itself is very, very suspicious. Although both Franken and Tweeden called for an independent investigation of her charge, none took place. This uh, retency uh, reflects the cultural moment in an uh, in era in when women uh, accusations of sexual uh, discrimination harassment are fully being taken serious after years of belittlement and dismissal. Some see it as uh, offensive to subject uh, accusers to scrutiny. But this runs uh, contrary to the American uh, system and to the Sixth Amendment rights of a person under the Constitution if it uh, gets to a uh, criminal matter and in some a civil matter you have to confront your accusers. Believe women has become a credo of the Me Too movement. Well, believing women when there is a case that will later become somewhat uh, credible. So this is one of the big uh, problems there. Yet he added uh, being on the uh, losing side of Me Too movement, when he, uh, which uh, he uh, feverishly supports. It led him to spend uh, time thinking about matters as due process, pr- uh, proportionality of punishment, and this is what our broadcast is about, the, quanti- uh, the uh, consequences of, of the Internet fueled outrage. Most of it was contrived. Now uh, 68, uh, Franken uh, sets in his uh, flat. He wished that he uh, had appeared before the Senate Ethics Committee as he had requested allowing him to marshal facts that countered the narrative. No senator has been expelled since uh, the literally the Civil War. In the modern times, only three have resigned on the threat. Harrison Williams, that was in... Uh, 1982, Bob Packwood of Oregon and uh, John Inser uh, in 2011. Williams, of course, resigned after being convicted of bribery and conspiracy. Packwood faced numerous sexual assault uh, allegations and Inser uh, was accused of making illegal payments to hide an affair. Different situation there altogether. And then there were several senators that regretted uh, participation Patrick uh, Leahy, he's from um, Vermont, the senior sen- senator there. He said in 45 years in the Senate, this is his biggest mistake, Heidi Heidekamp, who used to be a senator from North Dakota, told him, uh, I would take it back. It was a decision to call for his resignation. Uh, it uh, was in the heat of the moment without concern exactly for uh, this. Tammy Duckworth, who is the junior senator from Illinois, uh, she should have uh, should have been allowed to move forward. She says it was important uh, to acknowledge uh, the trauma that uh, Franken's accusers had gone through, but added we needed more facts. They didn't get facts. Angus King, based on the same Senator Markley, uh, Markley of the uh, of Oregon, told me this is a rush to judgment, and it was a rush to judgment on little judgment. Very, very flimsy situation. Bill Nelson, who used to be a senator from uh, Florida, I realized almost right away I made a mistake. But he made a political mistake from Harry Reid, the former uh, minority leader of the Senate who watched the drama unfold from retirement, told me it was terrible what happened to him. It was unfair. It took the legs out from under him. He was a very fine uh, senator. Changed uh, a change.org uh, petition to retract his uh, resignation, gathered uh, 75,000 uh, signatures, nothing to uh, laugh at. Joe Lunchbox Biden, who has been also accused of kissing, touching uh, people, uh, blew it by and continued on. 
His on uh, on doing a begin with a photograph that was released on a conservative talk show. That should have been a hit right there at the time the USO uh, tour. Evidently, the skit had been written uh, before uh, this Leanne Tweeden even arrived. The inoffensive burlesque of burlesque. That's what uh, one person had called it. Uh, my only uh, situation there is why in the hell was Anne Frank, uh, Al Franken on a USO tour in the first place? And uh, from Slate, uh, that's a so-called liberal uh, publication online with the Liberal Party in the UK, should resign immediately was the article. Sean Hannity picked up on it. And this all came out of this uh, KABC AM, a right-wing station in Los Angeles, where this Leanne uh, Tweedy uh, worked. So there should have been some suspicion there. And you have all sides of the story uh, going here, but what she said, what the photographer that took the uh, photo said at the time. And the station evidently was going under uh, out in Los Angeles. This is the same station, I believe, that played a... a pivotal role in the uh, persecution of the uh, all-American hero O.J. Uh, Simpson. And uh, from Al Franken, when this photo came out, oh my God, my life, my life, was Franken's first thought. He remembered the picture being taken, but was stunned by Tweeden's uh, account. Uh, he had thought that they were on friendly terms in 2009. She had attended a, a USO uh, award ceremony in Washington honoring him. Photographs of the uh, of the event uh, captured them laughing together. He had no member of no memory, excuse me, of having uh, the uh, uh, kissing a scene and knew that he uh, had written it for her. It was written way before her. In his book, Al Franken, Giant of the Senate, well, that was in uh, 2017 before this came out, he writes of uh, being preoccupied during the uh, 2006 uh, tour with deciding whether or not he'd run for public office, and he did, and the nation was uh, much better for that. Anyway, uh, the long thing about Saturday Night Live and this Leanne, a Tweety character, a Tweeting character, should be Tweety, and very so with people that were in uh, in here that substantiate him. Portman went on to say, "I get the whole Me Too thing, and a whole lot of uh, horrible stuff has happened, and it needs to change, but not just what happened here." She added, "Franken is a good guy, and I remember him uh, uh, talking uh, so sweet and lovingly about his wife." And, of course, they had Dallas Cowboy uh, cheerleaders here, etc., etc. Claimed that he wrote the skit before, this is uh, Al Franken, before uh, Tweedin's performance was uh, bored out by the interview he did on NPR in 2004-2005, where he described this, the uh, skit as a throwback to a, uh, frankly, lucid, vicious uh, 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 UCO uh, skit. But Bob Hope did uh, with Raquel Welch. They used to do these in the in the day also, and now it's time to kiss me. Anyway, this was something you would do before an audience of GIs, and no doubt with Bob Hope it was probably in Vietnam. Anyway, it just goes on to talk about who uh, took pictures, meta data. It comes in here for the camera suggests contrary to uh, uh, Tweeden's uh, statement. The image was not taken on Christmas Eve 2006, but as a uh, as a final uh, tent, but on the uh, 31st of December, photographs of on stage performance the previous day show Franken was advancing towards Sweden with a uh, sprayed hand as she fended him off uh, with a script and smiling in a winter coat and a Santa Claus hat. Oh well. I mean, this thing just goes on and on, and various other people. Robin Williams was on these uh, tours. And uh, let's see, uh, Mia goes on to say that I spoke with eight participants. This is in the 2006 tour, including uh, Judy uh, Dilliman, uh, the uh, 
military escort who was assigned to Tweeden. Uh, none observed Tweeden being upset with Frank, Franken, excuse me, and I remember everything like that. Gentleman uh, 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 said uh, her assignment was almost uh, continuously at, uh, she was always continuously at Tweeden's side. And various other people from a troubadour player that was there, um, and others uh, that were around. And CDs were sent out. Uh, many people on tour received CDs that included the photograph. Andy Barr, uh, Franken's assistant, received a CD. Uh, He's a pack rat and kept the original package in the mail. It was postmarked the 9th of January 2007. His stamped official business return address is uh, Department of the Army, Office of the Chief of Public Affairs. The disc says uh, USO in a plastic case, including a personal note in the form of from the contact uh, Montego White, an Army photographer on the trip. White's now... Uh, commands a, uh, a sergeant major in the Army's Defense Information School. And his wife said she was not confirming or denying it. That just says that he did it. As a photographer, that is. And this goes on and on. These uh, personal accounts here, which uh, don't get a very uh, far uh, period. It just says a little about uh, KABC AM tweeting the material on its website. And that was, in other words, it went viral from the website of the station owned by uh, Cumulus uh, Media, was struggling as a conservative uh, talk a radio station. This is since the days of O.J. Simpson. It used to be more, I forget who worked there at the time. Anyway, the, the uh, pro being the most pro-Trump uh, station in Los Angeles, there not been any votes in Los Angeles, period. After posting the story, Tweeden embarked on a media tour, Starting with a live press conference, proceeded with interviews with old uh, CNN's Jake Tapa, who had uh, been alerted the previous day, no doubt about it. Sean Hannity, The View, she was everywhere. And this is what Al Franken's people had to face. She was out front on this. And a very, very big problem within itself. And once that happens... Uh, that's the end of it. Uh, KABC AM to work as a senior overseer. Uh, Baker, who uh, describes himself as politically independent, has since left uh, the uh, W uh, K A B C uh, to work as a senior strategist. Madison uh, McQuinn, a conservative media company, amongst others, he's helped create ads. Ted Line Cruz, while at uh, KABC FM, he was. Uh, also a consulting producer with PJ Media, a hyper-partisan conservative opinion uh, platform. He told me as a KABC FM news director, he had obligation to contact uh, Franken's office at the same time. He didn't want to step on uh, Leanne uh, telling a story that was different from hers. In the interview, Tweeden described her decision to speak out as uh, torturous. Oh, well. Anyway, it wasn't torturous. It was an activity. She was an on-air correspondent for Fox a Sports. Best damn sports show, period. She went on uh, to host a late-night uh, poker show on uh, NBC. In those days, she shared uh, the damning photo of Franken with a few fans. Friends, friends, fans. Anyway, to uh, Hannity's credit, he never said a word about it to McIntyre. Um, they were going to do it uh, when Al Franken first run, according to McIntyre. Hannity wanted to use the photo that was in 2007 uh, when, it, uh, when it would have derailed uh, Franken's first Senate bid. He deferred, uh, but he deferred to, to Tweeden, who feared that because and she had been a lingerie model, her credibility would have been on attack. Why was that not brought up in this case? Well, the only thing I can say, this this case was a, a very de de uh, decried, decried, a uh, situation that uh, GOP uh, political consultants decided the way that they would do this and they would use the Me Too movement 
and the vulnerability of the Democratic Party, just as uh, D.J. Trump tried to bring Bill Clinton up in uh, the 2016 uh, campaign. The best he could do there, because people had forgotten about it, uh, was uh, accuse of Hillary Rodham Clinton of being an enabler. It didn't uh, stick uh, very much there. But Bill, uh, excuse me, Al Franken did uh, write a book, Liars and Lying uh, Liars, who uh, who tell them. And this is about Fox News. They sued Al Franken and uh, Fox News uh, Vendetta. And Roger Hills, who is now dead, fortunately. Um, so in other words, this is a situation that you have. And this uh, Leanne Twitty character claimed that she grew up in... Uh, well, last is Virginia, where her father was a mechanic for the Air Force. At 16, she graduated high school, ran off with a 30-year-old guy, and at 17, uh, Mr. Uh, Stein uh, asked her, uh, uh, did you say you got into Harvard, but you turned it down for modeling? She said, yep, and it turned out to be a lie. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to, uh, I was going to Harvard, but then I, but they didn't want me. I was uh, going to do, uh, Pam uh, Anderson uh, last night too. Anyway, I guarantee you if uh, I had wanted to I could absolutely. You couldn't get into Harvard. He said this is uh, what uh, Howard uh, Howard St- I say Stein Stern said they had an interview with her. This is all show business. One has to understand that. She even appeared in 2011 doing a burper thing against President Barack Obama. And in 2017, she was hired as a news anchor at KEBC FM show McIntyre on the morning. Uh, that spring, McIntyre mentioned uh, Franken on the air and noticed that Tweedon flinched. So he said. Anyway, McIntyre in the morning did a phone interview with Jackie Spear, as a representative in California, who has since disappeared, who <coughs> said that as a young a congressional aide that she had been uh, sexually assaulted by a chief of staff. Everybody was telling this story here, I suppose. He asked Tweeden if she wanted to go public, warning her that uh, accusing a political fig- uh, figure would make her a fair game. Her husband was in the Air Force. They had two small children. According to McIntyre, well, perfect story there. And that's where it was uh, framed up Roy Moore comes in here, but Roy Moore was a typically a different uh, situation there, and uh, the problem was Al Franken was very uh, precise in his uh, examination of people like Beauregard, uh, all kind. Of, even Roger Stone appears in this. So basically, what you had is liars, liars, and more liars appearing here, and the Democrats uh, falling uh, for the bait. And jumping on a rah rah uh, bandwagon, even old Chuck Schumer got in the act there of basically saying if uh, Franken didn't resign, he would force him to resign. So one of those kinds of situations there. Uh, a very sad situation uh, with uh, Al Franken. Al Franken was caught up in a moment that uh, the U.S. itself was going through transition with uh, with Me Too. You don't hear very much about Me Too. Now, except for poor R. Kelly, who was, I say poor R. Kelly, was uh, charged with an early 2000 soliciting a prostitution offense in, in Minnesota, when in fact he has more serious charges in Cook County, Illinois, Chicago. He's in jail now in Manhattan uh, on a federal charges, so he'll never go to Minnesota. The uh, district attorney there evidently got out of the drunk tank. <laughs> And uh, now he tried to get a little bit of publicity, which he did, and that was basically it. A week or two before Tweeden stepped forward, the former Vermont official tried to report Franken to the uh, Boston Globe. The newspaper has standard requiring Me Too accusers to be identified. After she came uh, forward, the woman called uh, KABC FM, but the station also uh, passed. And uh, then Jezebel, evidently, on the 30th, ran the anonymous accounts. One of the big problems with anonymous accounts is you can't uh, cross-examine anonymity. 
anonymity, excuse me. So this is the problem that poor Al Franken faced uh, throughout the situation. Now, other characters here, uh, Charlie Rose, uh, Matt Laura, Russell Simmons, John Conyers brought down John Conyers uh, based upon uh, the allegations of a woman that John Conyers could not uh, defend against. Now, Harvey Weinstein, uh, Louis C.K. there, uh, I don't know what the mark happened. Russell um, Simmons, we don't hear any more about him. So evidently he slipped out of it. But uh, this is one of the situations that come up. Uh, some of the senators, uh, Carmela Harris, uh, Claire McCaslin, no longer in the Senate anymore. Maggie Haslam, she's still around. Uh, Piggy uh, Murray, I'm surprised she got in on something like this. But a lot of people got in on this and... Uh, Al Franken faults uh, Schumer for not insisting uh, to his caucus that an investigation was on the way and a due process required facts before a verdict. Look, the leader is uh, calling the leader for a reason, Franken uh, told me. And then the political thing. So in other words, the entire commercial media got in on it. And uh, that was uh, curtains for Al Franken. In our episode, Al Franken. A case of injustice. And let me just add uh, a few other things here. Get to some quick uh, polling before I forget here. Getting too quick to run away. Uh, and whoops. Oh. Uh, Uh, the Cadillac of polling Gallup uh, came out here. Oh, DJ Trump is at 42% according to that. Uh, to Gallup, uh, DJ Trump's approval rating continues to hold in the low 40s with 42% of the American people approving of his job. This is in the latest update. 42% uh, exactly matches the average for six separate measurements uh, since uh, he registered a uh, 46 in late uh, April. The results are based on uh, the July 15th through 31st. Gallup poll. The poll was conducted during a period of controversy over Trump's social media uh, comments. Um, go back to where you came from. And uh, stirred attention. His own flattering remarks about, of course, uh, Elijah Cummings, who chairs the uh, committee there. And uh, polling occurred while uh, Robert Mueller was uh, testifying before the Senate. By comparison range for other elected presidents since uh, since the Second War, the Great War, during their first two and a half years is uh, 30 points. The White Eisenhower had the smallest range before Trump, 18 points, but generally very strong rating between 57 and 75. And it, it mentions uh, the White Eisenhower at 57. That was his lowest his highest was 75. John F. Kennedy at 61. He was at 83. Tricky Dick Nixon, his lowest was 48. And his highest was uh, 67. Jimmy Carter, Plains, Georgia, his lowest was 28. His highest was 75. Ronald Reagan, he actually went down to 35. Highest was 68. George H.W. Bush, his lowest was 51. Highest was uh, 89. Bill Clinton went down to 37, and his highest was uh, 59. G.W. Bush, his lowest was, uh, believe it or not, 51. And his highest was 90. Barack Obama went down to 40, and his highest rating was uh, 69. And D.J. Trump's lowest was uh, 35, highest was uh, 46. And that is where he uh, stood. And let me just... Uh, the Independent Business Daily. Let's see if we can get it up here. A very accurate uh, polling organization. And this is IBD and IPT. A poll here between it and uh, Technometrica. Uh, tracking of a DJ uh, Trump. Biden has a 13-point lead over D.J. Trump as uh, the president's uh, approval rating slides. And 
I don't have that story up here, but you hear it later. And the leadership uh, index uh, fell to 9.05 in August, uh, more than erasing the uh, 3.7 gain in July, falling uh, 3.2 June decline. May's a solid 5.4. So his approval rating, uh, yeah, at 40% is where he is here. In direction of the country, um, where are they? Fell 5 in August after jumping uh, 6.9 in July. We'll go back over this later, so we won't spend a lot of quality of life index. Also edged down uh, 7 tenths. They're very good at this. Uh, it remains above the average of this index on the President Obama, which was 53.7. And let's see, where is it here? Uh, remains above the average. And, uh, okay. Our uh, measurements of quality of life, etc. President Obama got a lot of very bad uh, press. Uh, Starting the world index fell, uh, what, 7.8 in August to 42.4. The index increased at one time by 10 and so forth and so on. Over the past 17 years, the highest index ever reached was immediately after 9-11 when it hit 74.9, that index. And we'll have uh, more on that uh, nonetheless. This is a Boston Red in the Jerry Pippen Memorial Broadcast booth. Again, the episode on the uh, 6th of August has been Al Franken, a case of injustice.